It is the freedom of making your own mistakes. And what we mean by these mistakes, of course, is try to make smart mistakes, non-fatal mistakes. The rules by which everybody else uh, works uh, are set by other people. The works of entrepreneurs are based on their own rules and you have the freedom of setting these rules. Whatever you learn, you only learn as an example. It is not a natural law that you have to do things in a given way, in a certain way. There is nobody that can tell you that you shouldn't break the rules that you've been taught and come up with your own. Now, obviously you exist within a given society and uh, as you design a, a business model around your entrepreneurial idea, as you go out into the real world uh, trying to find uh, customers, trying to find uh, uh, team members and, and very importantly uh, trying to find um, investors uh, to finance your idea, uh, you cannot abstract yourself uh, from the existing set of rules that society expects you to conform to. Uh, you have the freedom of being as crazy as you want and nobody will stop you. Of course, the price of being too crazy is that nobody will believe you. Everybody will say, oh my God, this guy or gal is, is really out there. It's fascinating, whatever they are doing, but I'm not going to risk my money uh, as a client or as an investor. I'm not going to risk my professional career as a, a, a team member. Uh, I'm not going to risk my social capital in being associated with this crazy person. So it is not an absolute freedom that you have. It's a relative freedom. Now, um, the mistakes that people are uh, talking about when uh, we say that uh, uh, everybody should learn from their own mistakes and things like that, when I say that these must be smart is because uh, we have the privilege, uh, at least uh, in, the, in the Western world, to live in a society that is actually pretty tolerant uh, towards all kinds of things that either in other parts of the world or in other times uh, would have been uh, quite dramatic. Uh, first of all, uh, if you um, lose the money that you are putting at risk, uh, it is very unlikely that you will end up in prison. Um, there are countries, even in the Western world, where um, a bankruptcy will, uh, as a consequence, stop you from uh, being in an executive position for a given number of years. Uh, but that is the worst that can typically happen. The investors very well know that their money is at stake and they actually count on the fact that uh, only a fraction of uh, the companies that uh, they invest in will generate uh, any kind of return and only really a small, small fraction, let's say 1 in 10, 1 in 20 or even fewer, uh, will be an outsized success. What they actually do when they invest uh, in your company is doing the opposite that they tell you should be doing. What they tell you is concentrate on a given idea, uh, focus on doing just one thing. Well, guess what? They are not concentrating on a given startup. They are not investing in just one idea they are spreading their bets. Why they are doing that is because they actually don't care if any given single idea fails. Uh, they care about being able and heard enough ideas around to achieve that uh, percentage of success that they need to generate as their own business model uh, in return. Now, you do care about not fatally failing uh, and that is why in the lean startup business model uh, it is so great to do the types of steps ahead that allow you 
to navigate around obstacles, to do course corrections, to achieve your final objective, which is building a profitable business. So how can you actually, uh, a priori, understand if a business is going to be successful? You can't. It is just not possible. Nobody can do it. Anybody who claims otherwise, they are just uh, um, lying or they are deluded. The uh, reason you cannot know in advance is because if you could, the likelihood of somebody else having had that idea uh, is so great. If it were so evident that uh, it would be successful, that there would be already somebody doing it and you wouldn't need to execute on it because you just would look at whatever it was and say, wow, that is a really great business. Actually, it's kind of intuitive that it would be. I wish I came up with the idea first, uh, but uh, you wouldn't have the question. The fact that you have the question whether this idea is going to be successful or not means that in order to prove it to be successful, you actually have to execute on it. And that is why the fact that you can do progressive refinements of the idea uh, matters, because unless uh, you are in uh, uh, the pharmaceutical industry or in the healthcare industry, where you need to spend a billion dollars before uh, you can put your product on the market and up until the end it can fail because you do your theoretical models, your, your animal trials, your human trials, your FDA approval process and at every stage it can go wrong up until the very, very end and if it does you end up having lost a billion dollars which is kind of, wow. Many, many other businesses, most of the other businesses, do not require uh, these um, big outlays of money before you start learning from the process and you navigate towards success. So, unless you know where you want to go, not precisely, but you have an objective, you have a mission, you have a a statement that clearly articulates for yourself, for your team, for your investors, where you want to end up. Obviously, you won't know if you ended up there. And in the meantime, as you navigate the course, you have to be able to measure, incorporate, understand the outcome of the measures in the process. Otherwise, you will be steering uh, blind, you will not uh, know whether the, the progress that you are making uh, net of the course corrections is going in the right direction at all. Referring to peer groups is exceptionally important. Um, investors ask you about competition not because uh, if you have too much competition, then they are afraid of uh, investing in you because uh, the likelihood of you coming up and asking for money for something that a thousand different businesses already do is uh, statistically lower than the other risk that they are really uh, caring about. They want to know about your competitors because they don't want you to be alone. They want you to be in a contextualized technological, social, um, economical uh, group that uh, is meaningful, uh, that uh, allows uh, benchmarks, uh, allows you to be compared against best practices, uh, allows you to become a visionary leader of uh, your specific field and industry, uh, allows uh, um, you to um, uh, be interviewed uh, by the media who need to be able to tell a story that their uh, readers or viewers understand. So um, you cannot be uh, a Tesla 
um, uh, who is a, a genius invent, an inventor and, and really uh, not successful, uh, you must be an Edison uh, that uh, is uh, more attuned to uh, the legal, uh, operational, um, technological realities and practicalities of, of his time. If you're familiar with The Oatmeal, which is a webcomic, uh, you will uh, know that Tesla is an admirable person and uh, Edison is a jerk. Well, um, maybe, uh, but uh, we are not discussing here uh, what is being a jerk and uh, what is being admirable. We are discussing here how to bring your entrepreneurial idea to success. Competition is uh, pretty easy to identify, really, uh, if you are selling a product or a service for money, everything and everybody is a competition that takes money from anybody instead of you. And uh, the reason why this is actually a meaningful statement rather than just uh, uh, an abstract uh, universal uh, platitude that is not actionable is because not only money is a, a very uh, important and, and, and practical constraint for, for everybody, um, but time is a very important constraint. And as you um, think about how um, subscribing to a new internet service uh, competes for money, uh, against uh, buying uh, uh, groceries and you would say well does it really if you think about the fact that uh, we only have 24 hours and 80 years to live uh, if we are lucky um, you understand that uh, what we are competing uh, for is the mind frame the attention uh, the passion the dedication the followers of our idea of our service and product uh, which is expressed uh, with the working hours uh, needed to earn the money to invest in that uh, uh, service or, or product as well as the time dedicated in using the service or, or product. Now more specifically the, the, the way that you can um, identify uh, competitors best is actually being out there. Um, a lot of people are reluctant of talking about their ideas because they think uh, that uh, they will be stolen. Uh, this is very naive and uh, it is a quite uh, a fast way of uh, identifying uh, an inexperienced uh, entrepreneur or actually an entrepreneur wannabe um, when they are secretive and uh, they uh, don't want to talk and it feels like they don't very much do anything uh, either. So why is it important to talk about your idea? Nobody's going to steal it. What is precious about an idea is what happens after it's being born. What are the next steps? What are the uh, smart mistakes uh, steering it towards success? Executing it is what matters. And being able to corral the resources around the idea, both financial, uh, professional skills, uh, make it visible in the minds of other people so that they also share this, the desire of it becoming successful. Um, and in this sense, uh, other people struggling with similar, not identical, but similar things who can be traditionally defined as your competitors will flock to you, will ask you, wow, what is your opinion? How did you uh, solve this problem? Can we uh, standardize in a given approach uh, so that uh, uh, what has been an advantage of just one uh, of us becomes a shared platform on which all of us can grow? And once again, this is not uh, the um, natural law of a single uh, approach. 
it is an input, uh, somewhat provocative input that uh, I want to give you so that you can think about it. In this interconnected world uh, where billions of people are on the internet, uh, hundreds of millions and billions of people have uh, uh, mobile phones, smartphones, uh, where uh, entire continents that uh, in our ignorant uh, chauvinistic uh, approach like Africa believe it's a blight of poverty are actually quite advanced in uh, not only internet and mobile phone penetration but also very uh, cool applications like mobile payments like in Kenya where the M-Pesa mobile payment network is not only on everybody's phones not only everybody uses it but actually a staggering 30% of the entire uh, gross domestic product GDP flows through this system. So in this interconnected world, what is very, very important is for your idea to fight for visibility, to fight for mind share and passion of other people to participate in its success uh, in their various roles. And there are uh, new tools that uh, you must leverage uh, in order to uh, be uh, visible. Uh, blogging, Twitter, Facebook, uh, making sure that you have a YouTube channel, making sure that you talk about your issues um, and that you openly discuss uh, not only uh, very specific promotional things, uh, or there is a new prize for uh, widget X, uh, by, but uh, you show a human side of uh, your entrepreneurial zeal, the passion that drives you and the rest of your team uh, are um, very emotionally compelling and can create a lot of positive feelings to uh, what, uh, what you are doing. And of course, uh, it is important to make sure that uh, everything is, you do is uh, coherent, uh, apply a lot of uh, common sense uh, to avoid um, uh, rookie mistakes uh, uh, of people uh, not really thinking uh, about what they are doing. Uh, also, um, not uh, reinventing uh, the content every time you move from one platform to another. It is perfectly fine to tweet a blog post, uh, link to it from Facebook, and embed the same video uh, everywhere uh, because the various touch points of uh, your stakeholders, the people who care about what you are doing, uh, are uh, different. And sometimes it does really take for somebody two or three times hearing the same message before they act on it, before they read the post that you wrote, uh, before they engage liking your page. Uh, an extremely exciting new development, of course, is uh, that concerning crowdfunding. Uh, Kickstarter campaigns, Indiegogo campaigns, AngelList syndicates. Now, these are uh, quite different things, of course. Uh, Kickstarter and Indiegogo, among uh, with, with others as well, are actually uh, giving an opportunity for your supporters to give you money in advance of something that you will give back to them, a product or a service or just a token of acknowledgement uh, like a postcard or a, or a thank you note uh, at the end of the campaign or whenever your product is available. On the other hand, AngelList uh, actually uh, um, organizes the fundraising for equity investment. And this is really a cutting edge uh, frontier of uh, what is possible today in the US in terms of, of raising funds. Uh, of course, innovation uh, is not stopping there and additional uh, exciting possibilities are being explored as we speak uh, in, uh, uh, for example, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin uh, which are uh, these days uh, uh, becoming visible um, not only to those who uh, have been following uh, their development for some time but also by a, a larger and wider public 
and both in terms of marketing and in terms of customer uh, acquisition and customer relationships or e-commerce, but also in terms of equity funding, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin are going to play a major, major role uh, in the future. Thank you.